In today's video, I want to start out by asking a question. And that question is, do you ever buy something on an impulse decision thinking it would be a really cool idea, but that just turns out to be a terrible choice? Well, if you're anything like me, you've done that more than once. And in this video, I'll show you how I attempted to take this garbage sycamore slab that I shouldn't have bought and turn it into something useful. You can clearly see the cracks the size of the Grand Canyon as well as the rough figure of this slab. And you might be thinking I got this for a discount, but I paid $421 for this beautiful piece of a dead tree that for the longest time I really didn't know what to do with. And the footage that you're watching right now is actually over a year old because originally this was going to be a set of coffee tables. But this slab had a set of unique challenges that made it difficult to work with. And watching this back, I have absolutely no idea why I bought this thing. Anyway, my original game plan was to flatten this thing with the router sled on both sides. And I made my own router sled at first, which was really a failure of a project itself because my first attempt at doing this was using T-Track as the sled and there was just too much resistance across the rails to make that thing slide efficiently. So I upgraded to a linear rail sled which worked much better and I was able to get this thing nice and flat. At this point the slab looks so much better but it still has those nasty cracks and like I said I didn't know what to do. So I put these things aside for about a year and a half which brings us to present time which is what you're seeing now. Not surprisingly, this slab was still in awful shape. The cracks didn't magically fill themselves in, unfortunately. So really the only option that I had with this slab was to start cutting it apart into smaller pieces. And I tried to take advantage of the cracks by cutting right down on those to eliminate as much of those fractures within the board as possible. All right, so at this point we've got our slab ripped into smaller boards and now we need to cross cut it into even smaller boards, which will give me some pieces that I'm able to work with for what I'm trying to make. Now, as far as slabs like this piece go, usually your larger slabs are used for tabletops, like a big dining table or a coffee table, or maybe something that you would have to pour a little epoxy in if it has cracks. And there's a bit of a trade-off between using slabs versus regular lumber for something like I'm trying to do here. The trade-off being that these slabs often do have a ton more character than your regular flat sawn or riff sawn lumber. However, that figure and character can definitely pose some additional challenges. Opposed to regular boards, those challenges being all of the cracks that you're seeing in this slab, as well as more unstable wood that you'll have to consider wood movement for. So for the most part, at this point, I've gotten rid of all of the junk, as much of the cracks as I could. I have several nice pieces that I can make something with. So the next step was to glue everything together. One thing that I noticed that really surprised me when cutting this slab up was that this sycamore slab had just an unreal amount of character to it. You can see in this shot, all the boards are different colors. There was some quarter sawn figure, a few spalted pieces, some completely flat pieces, and a ton of different colors and hues throughout this slab. And I glued all the pieces up intentionally mismatched to drastically exaggerate those colors even more. So my goal with whatever these four pieces will become was to make them look as wild as possible. Ever since I broke down and got a drum sander, I think I've achieved the pinnacle of laziness, not even wiping that glue off, but rather just running it through the drum sander to get rid of that completely. So up to this point in the video, possibilities of what we're gonna do with these pieces are absolutely endless, but this next part might give you a pretty good hint of the direction of each of these pieces are going to take. If you're not quite following along with what I'm doing in this step, well, I'm cutting circles obviously, but more importantly, and a better explanation is that you can cut perfect circles using a router. If you can attach your router to a fixed base plate and then just create a pivot point in the middle of whatever you're trying to cut, as long as everything is secured in place, that router can spin right around the pivot point and cut a perfect circle every single time. So whenever I cut about halfway through with the router, I like to stop and finish it off with a jigsaw, and then I'll come back and get that bottom edge with a flush cut trim bit. You can definitely go all the way through with that spiral bit in the router at first, but the more times you go around with that spiral bit in the beginning, 
the more chances there are for a slight misalignment or maybe your router will jump or gouge into the side a little bit. And besides, this flush trim bit is extremely satisfying to use and it makes for some really awesome footage, which makes my decision easy. So a quick recap of everything we've done so far. We've taken a slab, cut it in half, cut it in smaller pieces, glued the pieces back together to make bigger pieces, then cut those pieces out into circles. And now we'll clean these circles up to make them look good. So on the top side, we'll use a small round over bit. And on the bottom, I used a steep chamfer bit for some even more detail. So the white elephant in the room, or should I say in these pieces, which I've talked about throughout this entire video, was all the cracks. And while I tried my best to eliminate as many as possible, in order to have enough wood for what I was trying to do, I had to include some of the pieces with cracks, which gave me the opportunity to do my all-time favorite thing, which is put epoxy in the cracks. And if you can't tell by the sarcasm in my voice, let's just say I would rather hand sand a cactus than use epoxy. Now you might be asking, is epoxy really that bad to use? And the answer to that is no, it isn't. Honestly, I'm just really awful at using epoxy and I probably need a lot more practice. One thing that I have learned is that using a flame or a torch will help to break up some of the air bubbles in the epoxy, getting it deeper down in the cracks. Once the epoxy has finally cured, we can sand everything down and get these mystery item circle pieces ready for some finish. Speaking of the finish, I wanted to do a little side-by-side -side comparison to make it more interesting. So I'm going to use Rubio Natural and Rubio Pure on these sycamore pieces because sycamore is not a wood that you see used very often and I was curious what the different colors would look like. So while I buff these finishes in, I just want to mention that because there is no sponsor for today's video, instead, I'll be sponsoring this video. And what I mean by that is that I'm running a huge sale on my Etsy site right now, where I have just a ridiculous amount of walnut, cherry, and maple cutting boards for sale. So if you are interested in supporting the channel, or you just want a really sweet cutting board that you know is very well made, check out the link in the description where everything is on sale for 25% off right now. And I don't want to spoil the end of the video just yet, but whatever the end product of these sycamore circles will become will also be listed on my Etsy page. So if you haven't figured it out yet this far in the video, these circles will become tabletops, and I really wanted to make the table legs out of the sycamore as well. But the leftover pieces that I had were just such poor quality that it was nearly impossible to have enough wood to make the table legs. And as awesome of a look as that would have been, I ultimately decided on these black metal hairpin legs. These legs should be incredibly easy to secure up underneath the table just with the provided bolts, but also I think they give a nice modern, sleek, and slim profile look, which should complement the wild looking grain of the tabletop. As far as the installation of these legs go, we just put them in place, mark some pilot holes, drill those out, and then we can secure these with the provided bolts. So the legs go in place and in no time we'll have a set of finished tables. Now in the beginning of the video we asked if it was possible to salvage this slab that was full of cracks and compromises to see if we could actually make it into something useful. And throughout this video I think we answered that question. But now I have another question, and that's, which color do you like better? the Rubio Monocoat Pure, or the Rubio Monocoat Natural. The more I look at these pieces, the more indecisive about my favorite I become. So if you have a favorite between the two, let me know what you think. And also don't forget that whichever style is your favorite could end up at your house through that Etsy link down in the description. If you did make it this far in the video, thank you for watching.